Hi everyone, it's Susie here from Paper Crafting by Suzanne and today we're going to make some botanical borders. Uh, uh, these are what they look like, the finished product. This one I cut on the edge so you could use it like a... Oh... Like a, a side tuck where you would tuck something in like that. Or you could do this and use it with like a border that with if you don't mind things sticking out or you could use it as a belly band or you can use it as a side tuck as well or just a pretty fun border now for these I used I've done it both ways with um, regular fussy cut images and I've done it with um, stickers. And I find that they both work, but I find with the stickers, sorry, I'm getting my little lamps on here. With the stickers, uh, they're more forgiving because when making these borders, you have to do a lot of, um, you have to do a lot of uh, tucking. So that you want, because you want to cover up as much white space as you want. Kind of like a collage, but in, you know, a certain direction. And I start, and these are the books I use. Uh, I'm sure you've seen, all seen these. I have the Botanical Sticker Book, Bees and Birds. Forest and Fairies. I have the other ones too, which also have um, botanical images in them. But So I started one. And the way I start is with, um, I want the uh, main focal one. I usually to pick a big one like this fern. And you can see they don't stick down very well. And that's why I like them. They do in the end because I use... This is what I like. I like the Royal Coat Decoupage Finish in Clear. And it helps stiffen the end product. And then you can tuck, get in there and get underneath all these pieces that, you know, don't stick very well, which is what you want because, like I said, you want to be able to tuck things in and move things around as you need to. So I started with this. And I've got all my got all my images cut here. Let's see what would be the best way to show this. Okay, those are my pieces. And you just I use a needle to get the backing off of these. And for this one, I'm doing um I'll put that off to the side a little bit so that you can see this better. For this one, I'm using um, all kinds of botanical images. I'm using florals. I'm going to use some birds. I'm using mushrooms, foliage. There's a bird's nest there. And then what we're going to do is just keep layering. And I try to stick with the bigger images first and then fill in with the smaller image. And here I'm just carefully peeling off the backing of the sticker. And then see how you can just kind of tuck that in. And um, let's see, I've got some smaller ones to tuck in like that. I'll come back and do more tucking after I get it all filled out. So it's Easter weekend. So I wanna wish you all a happy Easter. Hope that you have something special and fun planned. We have, um, well, we have the whole family coming over. 
our um, two boys, their family, my daughter and her family. Um, so I think it's a total of, what do I always have to figure it out? You'd think I'd know. Uh, a family of five, a family of four, a family of three, 13, and stamina, which is 15. Is that right? Anyway, that's who I'm cooking for. You're doing a prime rib, which will be yummy. Now, don't worry about these sticking up because, like I said, when I put that clear coat on it, it will drop down. It will be flat. Let's see. I'm going to get this one on for sure because I love the blue in it. It's a really dark blue. Personally, I prefer... Um, Oh, fussy cut images from books, preferably vintage books. But for this project, um, I like, oh shoot, I just tore that. Oh, I think I can cover it up. Uh, I like the stickers because, like I said, they're forgiving and I can lift them and shift them as I build the border. This guy's trying to give me fits. Okay. Let's see. Where should this go? I think I could use some glue up here. And I want to use this bird. It looks like he's sitting on a branch. I'm doing very good at getting between the actual sticker and the backing. Sorry, my trays keep bonking around. Um, let's see, where would the bird go? It needs to go on kind of a branch, so maybe right there and then it's two birds actually that's kind of high for him let's see now I can carefully remove it and reposition it and put it more like like that I, I really, for one thing, I like fussy cutting. And another thing, I like, um, I like this project a lot. And I think that they're going to be really versatile. And I'm sure you've seen borders like this made before, so I'm not, not claiming to have invented it. Okay. I just kind of, this is just sort of my version. Just my version of how I do it. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to tell you, with these books, there is quite a big border around them. It's about... Probably an eighth of an inch. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's about an eighth of an inch. So this is why I fussy cut these as well. After I, and I, I fussy cut them with the backing on them. And then, because all of these still have the backing on them. 
obviously, if I took the backing off, they'd be um, sticking together. And also, it makes it go a lot quicker if you fussy do all the fussy cutting first and then have them ready, and then you can just arrange as you need to go. And then if you find that you have more blank spots and you need more, you can go ahead and cut more. Cover all of that mushroom up. Let's see. But this is just a really fun project and I hope you guys try it. Let me know if you try it and how you liked it. I did try it earlier with some, um, don't know what you call those stickers that with the really shiny coating on top. You can get them in packs um, on Amazon and let's see, the ones I got, I think I got from Tape, tapeology and they're really shiny but they're also transparent so I just things just didn't look right the way they were layering so I kind of gave up on that they're fine for other things but I just didn't like them for this project myself And if you don't want to border this big, what I thought I'd do is, like, say your book is only this wide, I'd find a place where I could fussy cut around and make it look natural, if you know what I mean. Okay, we're going to do a big old queen bee. I'm kind of excited for tomorrow because Millie, our youngest grandson, granddaughter, um, grandchild, period, out of six, she's, um, she's almost two, but this will be the first year she gets to do the church, um, Easter egg hunt. So I'm excited to watch her. She'll be cute. Well, they'll all be cute, but should be fun to watch. Hunting her eggs. That's one big bug, isn't it? <laughs> oh boy. Okay, that. Let's see. Find some smaller ones to fill in the gaps here. See, I keep going all the way through the sticker instead of out the side. And these are matte too, which is really nice. I mean, I prefer matte. A lot of people might not, but I do. I like Matt. And some of the flowers, they will get a little bit covered up, of course. But that's what happens when you collage things. Let's see. That's small. We need some red in here. You could also do it mono. Tone. You could do like all red flowers. You could do all greenery, all pink flowers. Or pink and green if you wanted to add the greenery. Because we know all flowers have some kind of foliage. I'm going to go in here and lift this up. I don't want to move things completely, but, and I don't want to go too far off the edge. I'm 
not, and I don't want to cover that bird up. It gets a little tricky sometimes. That's why, you know, don't let it bug you if things are just poking out here and there. Let's see, I wanted some berries. Let's see what I have here left. I've got those pink berries are pretty. Try those. Ouch. Sorry, I'm being so quiet. I'm just trying to concentrate on not going through the sticker with my needle. If I actually saw a berry that had leaves that color, I think I'd fall in love with it. It's so pretty. There is a um, YouTuber that does um, videos, mostly junk journaling, and she, well, I know people call mushrooms mushrooms or toadstools, but um, she won't use them unless they are, it's a fall project because she said, Mushrooms are a fall thing. And um, here in Oregon, it's mostly spring, but we get a lot of mushrooms year round. So it's not a particular season. The main season is spring, but year round. So, you know, just kind of depends on where you live in the world. So it does vary. Remember that. Let's see, and then I kind of keep an eye out to make sure that there's foliage and it looks like I need some foliage up there. I, I mean, not, it doesn't have to be completely even. I just like it to be Varied. Good gravy, Susie. Here we go. Okay. That looks like a eucalyptus leaf. Very pretty. I wanted this last color to get out there a little bit more. Now, let's see, I'm going to need a lot of little pieces. Do I need a big one there yet? Um, mm, that's pretty. I wish I knew how to buy needles like uh, the gauge. I mean, does the number go up or down to get a skinnier, finer needle point? Because I'd like some really fine Point, pointed needles to work with for certain things like this. See, this one's pretty intricate, so oh my goodness. Okay. It's just wanting to tear everywhere I try to pull it apart. If 
finally. Okay. I wanted this red to stick up over here. Pretty, pretty. And then I had the red sky to violet. So I, ideally the way I do this, I would try to um, fill in with big or bigger images, then go to medium and then go to small. And I, I know I'm not necessarily doing that today, but that would be probably ideal to do it that way. Ooh, that bird's pretty. Isn't that pretty? There's a butterfly right there, but he could go there. Yeah. Oh, I found an old bird book at um, St. Vincent de Paul the other day. I think it was from the 50s. And um, really pretty illustrations. Because I do prefer... Um, I think I'll cut that off. I do prefer illustrations over photos. I don't really care for photos. Every once in a while I'll use them, but um, that's just my preference. And let's do another bird. So yeah, I get excited when I find a good old book with good illustrations. They're hard to find. That could be his nest. No, it's got blue legs. I don't think so. All right. We need some smaller things and flat. See, I don't think we have any butterflies over here. Let me do this one. I mean, it's a pretty time consuming project by the time you figure in your fussy cutting. Um, good thing to do if you're just sitting and watching television or something. But, um, just really rewarding, I think, is what I'd call it. I haven't used one on the page yet. I'm anxious to try. Sometimes you get like images that have little things like this all clustered, and then you kind of need to stick in a just a bigger image overall. Okay, let's get some smaller images out. Got a dragonfly. A little floral butterfly. I saw a ladybug in here. There's a bug. A little tiny ladybug. And that's a smaller flower image we might be able to use. Um, 
And like I said, when you're all done and you find there's some, still some spots that you want to fill up, you can add things. It's an easy thing. It's an easy fix. Easy, easy. You could use a little bit of foliage up there. I like that you have this pretty red. I have a red bird. I have some more mushrooms. That's garbage. Um, they have these mushrooms where we go to at the beach. The the red ones with the um, polka dotted caps. And um, there's a path that goes down to the beach from where we stay and I call it, we call it the fairy path. It is lined with these mushrooms and it's so pretty. And it's got a covered arch. Um, just, it's really pretty, just magical looking actually. Okay, let's get some of these smaller images. I was gonna put this bird in, wasn't I? any birds on that end. It's okay. Well, there's one there, I guess, and one there. So, okay, I feel better. This is a cardinal. He is very pretty. It might just be his head that we see, but that's fine. These pieces will all flatten out when I put the medium on. I'm just trying to get into some of those uh, super white spaces. I should be able to with these bugs. I need to remember next time I do this that to cut a few more smaller pieces out to get the end result that we want. A little bit tiny bug. Maybe I should put this butterfly there. That's pretty big white space. I'll look pretty under the blue eggs anyway. Very pretty. About this bug. Some people don't like bugs and they won't put them on their projects, but um, I, as a gardener, I happen to know they come hand in hand with flowers and the forest. So we do, um, we do go foraging for mushrooms. And it can get pretty thick, and boy, there's a lot of bugs. I'd rather see a bug than a snake any day of my life. You can count on that from me. And I get this little teeny tiny ladybug. Might as well use him. And I know you've probably noticed some of these pieces are fairly intricate. And I got these, I don't know if I've shared these with you, these scissors, they're spring scissors. They've got a really fine point and they get in all these nooks and crannies between the branches and things. 
and I have loved them. They really save when you're doing a lot of fussy cutting. They save on your your hands a lot, which is nice. Got a couple more little ones here. Another bee or a wasp. I don't know which. I should know the difference. We've got a real problem with wasps under our the eaves of our house, which I don't like at all. Oops, is there anything else small that I can add? I could cut this little butterfly and use it. You can always trim off your bigger pieces too. Where did I see the biggest? That's pretty big right there. And I saw, I can use this berry for up here. You see, that's still usable. So I have some to go to start my next border with. Okay, if there's more that needs filled in, I can see a spot right there I need to. And I'll use some of these berries. You know, I've been thinking about putting um, fussy cut images in my Etsy shop. And I usually do this kiss cutting, so it's not right on the image, but really close. So if you would be interested in something like that, will you please let me know and I'll, I'll add some to my shop. Right now there's just um, journals in there, but... Um, I've been thinking of other things that I could add. I just, I'm not sure how much visibility my shop gets because that's all I have is journals. Hang on one second, I gotta brush. Whoops, I'm sorry. It's my head, huh? longer than I thought. I use, uh, I just use parchment paper to do this. And shake that up real good. little pieces that are sticking up and it's when it's somewhat dry it dries pretty quickly um, then I go back and put it under a heavy book to make sure it flattens good parchment paper is thankfully when you go out on the edge, that's what helps make them stiff. Or the edge is stiff. So in case you don't want to trim it off. And 
see one of them that I made I I did this every like couple of inches to make sure that I got under things really good but this is gonna work too so we're fine and once they're stuck semi stuck like this together you you can get under things pretty easily This part, I feel like I need to get under. This is also something you can come back and touch up on, like if you see a piece lifting up, um, you can come back through and uh, touch it up with your glue. Whatever whatever medium you like to use, you might like Mod Podge, you might, there's that little, little guy came off, a little ladybug. I, I heard somebody call that a, do they call them ladybirds in the UK? I like that better than ladybug. Ladybird sounds I don't know, this sounds more exotic. I might start, start calling them ladybirds. I always like to throw my grandkids for a loop when I do something like that and they look at me and go, what are you talking about, Gigi? That's a ladybug. They like to get to, they're at that age already where they, most of them anyway, they like to give me a hard time and tease me, which, which is fine. Just fine. Isn't that what grandparents are for? See that little guy just wanted to stick up too. Down there. And stay. Might need to find something for right there. Okay. I think that's good. Oh, I need something right there too. Let's see. What do I have that I could use there? Anything? I'll have to come back and fill that in with something. I have another little butterfly. That would be perfect. Let me get the thing off. Sometimes you don't see these things till you are finishing up with the project. Okay, well, it was right there, wasn't it? Or the ladybug, or the butterfly sticking out there. Okay, that covered that up pretty good. Pretty good. I'll wait on that little spot. Whoops. Um, right there. Because I might cut the outside of the border off. We'll see. Okay, that is it. And the other thing I was going to tell you was um, when this is dry, they're probably some of the backside will be a little sticky where these are sticking out. And before you glue it onto whatever you're using it on, if you have an embossing powder to get the flakes of embossing powder off like this or a bag, you know, that you go like that to get the spires of the embossing powder off, you can turn stickers over and do this on them and it will get the stickiness off. So that's our finished border. 
I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you will subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. That'll look a little bit different when it dries because, and after I put it under a book. Because now, right now you can see the glue. You won't be able to see the glue. It dries clear like, uh, like these two. Right there, so. So you can't see the glue at all. But um, yeah, I'll have to make something and show you what they look like when you are able to use them in a finished project. Um, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe, give me a thumbs up and all that good stuff. And I hope you have a wonderful Easter Sunday. See you next time. Bye.